Whoop. Whoop. Oh, Rocky. Oh, Rocky. Good boy. Good boy, when Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Lisa Alistway, and on this channel, I create inspirational and informational videos you can use and apply to your life. Today, it is my honor to introduce Nathan Tikel. Did I pronounce that right? Okay, great. And we're gonna talk about, if you haven't noticed, I've dressed the part, we're gonna talk about bird dog training. So Nathan, can you tell us a little bit about your background? I've been in the hunting business for nearly 30 years, either big game or bird dogs, and probably in the bird dog business for about 20 years. Not, uh, I wasn't always full time, but I've been full time for about 10 years. Okay. And when did you um, start your Teak's Kennel and outfitting business? My first outfitting business was a big game outfitting business called Pro Hunts. And I ran Pro Hunts from 92 till uh, probably oh, about 2001 maybe. And that's when I got out of big game hunting and went solely into bird dogs and, and bird hunting. Okay. But I still take a lot of people on. Okay. So what exactly do you do at your business? Well, uh, there's really four parts of my business that pay me. One of them is, um, is training dogs. That's maybe 25% of my business. Uh, probably 50% of my business is taking clients hunting. I've had clients that have been hunting with me for 20, 30 years. Since 92, I've had clients hunting with me. I'm hunting with their sons now, so oh, it makes nice. me feel old. Yeah, <laughs> you know. it's a generational thing that gets yeah, passed down. It does, and you can do that with bird hunting or with big game hunting you can't because, you know, they kill the biggest trophy you have, they're ready to go hunt somewhere else. And so, but with bird hunting, they won't come back year after year after year, anytime you have the birds. Then probably, then I do some boarding, not a lot, but I have about nine or 10 dogs that I board year around for, for people in this area that, that want bird dogs, but they don't want to take care of them all the time. And uh, then another big part of my business is selling pups and, and selling, and I sell mainly German short hair pointers. German short hair pointers, okay. I do raise a few English pointers and a few uh, English setters, okay. but uh, mainly GSPs. Okay. And, and um, so if somebody was to enroll their dog into your dog school, uh, what would they expect? How would that process go? And what's the length of the program? A lot of people do different things. Mm -hmm. uh, some people have a puppy program, which I don't. I okay. don't have time for a puppy program. I want the dogs to be eight to 12 months old. Okay. You know, if I'm gonna train them on birds. There's a, there's a lot of different kind of training you can do too. But, uh, if I'm gonna just do a hunting dog training on birds, I would like, like them to be at least eight months and then I'll get out and make sure they're ready even at that. I like a puppy to be able to be a puppy. I don't, shouldn't be training a dog until it's older, I don't think. Okay. So, and it don't have an attention span for it, you know. And so when it's, say I get a dog eight or nine months old, they bring it to my kennels, it stays there with me, I feed it and take care of it every day. And I take it out and I'll start the first process I have is stop to whoa, and I'll walk them around, whoa, and come here, and they, or come, you know, I teach them to come to me. I don't want one running off before I start training it. And so I teach them whoa. There's not a lot of commands with a pointing dog, mm -hmm. because all you want them to do is run and find a bird. You want them to stay with you. Some people don't want that. Some people want them to run far and straight away, mm -hmm. you know, if they're in a horseback game. There's a lot of games you can play with a bird dog, and I compete. In a, I've competed in a lot of different games oh, over the years. Really cool. And it, and every one of them's different in how you would want your bird dog trained. 
and uh, there's a horseback trial game that the dogs run really big, like two or three miles from me. And uh, when they go on point, they have a scout that tells them they're on point. A judge goes up, and if that dog does not retrieve, very seldom them dogs have birds shot over them. Oh. And so, and they just, but they got to stand there if they leave, they're in trouble. Yeah. And, uh, they get picked up, and they're <laughs> out of the competition. Um, so when you when somebody brings their dog to your facility, can you tell right away if they're going to be a really good bird dog, or this one's going to have a lot of work to it, or this one's even it's not going to be a good bird dog? Are there characteristics you can pick up right away? No, not right no. away. You know, um, in a week. In a week. In a week, you can tell when it's going to kind of going to be. Okay. Not even at that. You know, if it it trains out, you know, you can train one to perfection, and it. You still don't know what it's going to be until you put it in a lot of a lot of hunting situations. You okay. Know, some bird, some dogs just find a lot more birds than other dogs do. Okay. So, so there isn't anything where you can tell right away, like that's a lazy dog, and. Oh yeah, you can yeah. tell that. You can tell yeah. one that's not going to get out away from you and hunt hard, and, and that's just in their nature. But every dog has, you know, every dog is an individual. Everybody always asks me, you know, what do you prefer? Do you prefer GSP? Do you prefer an English Pointer, an English Setter, or Brittany? Right. I, I don't care. I'm not killing one. I just like a good bird dog. You just like a good bird dog. You okay. know, I like one that's obedient. I mm -hmm. want it to handle with me and go with me hunting. I don't want to be following it all the time. But I've had some really good ones that I had to follow all the time. But uh, but I like one that will go with me and hunt with me. Mm -hmm. You know, and and make it easy. I'm, most people are out there to have a good time. They don't want to be stressed over their dog. They want it to, to work with them and, and have fun, you know, yeah. that's what it's about. So are those the three main bird dog types, the German short hair, the Brittany, and the pointer? English pointers. English pointers. Uh, no, there's a lot more. There's a lot more, but those are the main ones that you work with? No, I wouldn't say that. There's German wire hairs. Okay. There's, uh, you know, they're real shaggy. I, I, I train a lot of German wire hairs, and they're good dogs. So there's Vizlas, there's there's a lot of different kinds of pointing breeds okay. now, and even more poodle pointers, and all yes. kinds. And I've trained nearly every kind that there is. Yes. But the, um, that that's the main ones I deal with. Okay. You know, the it, poor. And so when you're training them, um, what kind of positive reinforcements do you do with them? Oh, you pet them and you talk to them and you get them to come here, you know, just like any other dog, you know. I always try to end on a positive note, no matter mm -hmm. what I'm doing. You know, most, everybody thinks I'm a bird dog trainer. I, I'm not really a bird dog trainer. I just enhance what they already know to do. Because mm -hmm. it's you instinct know, on these. It's all instinctive. Yeah. And they're bred to the point now to where, you know, most of them are really good bird dogs from the start. You mm -hmm. know, you just have to, they may not hold their birds long enough, so I will set them back, stroke them up, and tell them, and get them to stand there. You know? okay. And there's several different training techniques you use to get them to do that. It's, you know, you don't, if a bird dog will not point, you do not train it to do it, because it's impossible to do, you know. Mm -hmm. You you gotta have a bird dog to start with. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you just enhance what they know to do. Yeah, and so th it's very instinctual for them and they, they love to do it, right? This is, they do. it's like, they can't wait to get out there and point and run and find the bird and so on. That That's exactly what they love to do. The thing that a pointer does not love to do is retrieve. Mm. You gotta buy a retriever. There's other bird dogs that are called retrievers. A Labrador retriever, a golden retriever. I do not work with Mm -hmm. but I teach pointers to retrieve mm -hmm. and that's that's a long process and it's a difficult process it's called force fetching and sometimes they're natural you know they can be as natural as a as a, as a Labrador mm -hmm. but most of the time they're not oh interesting because Labradors they can't point but they can retrieve there are pointing Labradors oh there is now. oh well, I didn't there know is that there is a very pointing Labrador so okay me I'm not real familiar I don't have a lot uh -huh. I have a Labrador that I carry with me when I'm hunting because it looks plus to hunt for for the birds that yeah. are down. 
yeah. they don't merge, you know. Yeah. Where the pointers, they'll hunt with them for them for a little while. Mm -hmm. but then they want to go find another bunch of birds. They don't want to find the down bird. Well, my Labrador loves it. She loves to just stay with us. And yeah. She'll go get them every time. Very cool. So let's talk about the birds a little bit. There's different okay. kind of birds, and I assume like the different dogs like the different type of birds, or does that matter? No, not really. Okay. You know, pointing bird, pointing dog will, nearly all of them will point any kind of a bird that's, that, that rests on the ground. Okay. So, so they're not really a dove dog, you know, unless they're a retriever, mm -hmm. you know, because them birds fly all the time. But you have quail, pheasant, chunkers, you have uh, sage grouse, all there's many different kinds of grouse, there's many different kinds of quail, you know, all over the country. And, um, you know, and all of them live on the ground. You mm -hmm. know, they don't roost in trees, they live on the ground, in the grass, and a pointing dog would love to oh, uh, find the, the birds and, and point. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. Interesting. Okay, cool. Um, so, let's see here. Let's talk about the maturity of the dog going mm -hmm. through the program. Um, how long does it take for them to, I know it probably depends on the dog, but what's like the average maturity to get them through it? If, um, for the most part, when I get a dog that I'm training just for birds, it's a six week process. I try to get it six weeks. Six weeks. Yeah. Okay. You know, it, you know, every dog's different. Yeah. You know, and if you're having trouble, trouble with one, you may keep it a little longer. And, uh, but, but you know, six to eight weeks, you know, okay. it's pretty much gets it all done. But it's another six to eight weeks to get them where they'll retreat. Okay. And sometimes even longer on that. Okay. Now, do you have advice for people before they drop the dog off to your school? And then what advice do you have after they've graduated your program? The worst mistake anybody ever makes on a pointing dog uh -huh. is when they're little, they teach it to sit. They teach it to sit. That's bad. That's bad. That's for a trainer, that's terrible. Because, because when you're teaching when you're trying to enhance their point, they go out and point the bird and they move on the bird, you wanna set them back. Yeah, that set them back, stroke them up and pet them. Mm -hmm. Well, they wanna set when they been taught to set already. Okay. So you don't get that point. And uh, I you know, that's that's the worst thing. You know. Things people can enhance to do is teach them to whoa. You can teach them to stop and be calm, mm -hmm. and uh, and just stand there. That's fine. That's great for a bird dog training. Mm -hmm. You know, come here. Teach your dog to come to you. You know, and uh, you know, and all you do on that is cause free trace enforcement on a on a long check cord or a lead. You know, let it put him on the check cord. Come here, pay him. You know, you do that over and over from when they're a puppy. Yeah. You know, they, they pretty much, much. Okay, so let's, and so what advice would you give for those who've graduated your program? Uh, take your dog hunting, you know. Right. That's what they love to do, you yes. know. The dogs that, I'll tell everybody when they pick their dog up, you know, this is a nice dog, you know, the more you, you can take it hunting a lot and make it an excellent dog. If you don't take it hunting much, it's going to be a poor dog. It don't matter about the dogs ability really the more you take them the better they get better. even in uh, older age even in older age really yeah, they don't age them. out no now there's a certain time where you can't hunt them much you know mm -hmm. when they get 10 or 11 you know okay. you don't you know then they're just good pets by yeah then, you know yeah they sit by the fire and they love to be with you yes you know i have that dog my best competition dogs I think she placed in a trial when she was 11 years old in a big trial. So she oh, wow. did well for a long time. She passed when she was 13. Okay. The main problem with pointing dogs, they just don't live long enough. You know, 13, know. 14 years old. Yeah, yeah. But that, that first 10 to 11, they're very productive. They are. And they do a lot of... Uh, You'll start seeing them slow down when they're eight or nine. Eight or nine. Know. But they're still, you know, you got to keep them in shape. You know, it's more important to to keep them in shape for before the hunting season. Don't just take them out there and expect to, yeah. um, to cause they'll hunt until they die. Yeah. They really will. Do they need a special diet, you think? Uh, just good dog food. Good dog food. You know, okay. and you know, they're just like any dog. You take care of them, you know, 
take them to the vet when they need to go to the vet and, mm -hmm. and uh, feed them good dogs and, and you'll be fine. And so for the audience that doesn't know about like the hunting business and like where where is it popular around the United States and the states, where would you say most people go to hunt here? Texas is a big hunting area yeah. for Bob White Court. For what kind of quail? Bob White's. Bob White quail. It's, okay. Uh, one of the, and blue quail. We have we have a lot of wild bird hunting here. Um, I go to Montana and Idaho a lot. Okay. I like Idaho myself over any other besides Texas. Texas, I think, is premier. Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. This area, you know, is Bob White country, and they're they're a great bird to hunt. You know, with a dog, with a pointy dog. It's just a traditional old southern gentleman, you know, they mm -hmm. just go out and it's been that way for years. They used to have birds in Georgia and, and uh, Virginia, all during the east, but for some reason there's not many birds in that country anymore. They've huh. all left that country, so a big part Where'd they of, go? They, I don't think they've left that way. They, they just do not grow. They, they, they don't raise any birds oh, in that country okay. anymore gotcha. because of several different things. There's a, a type of grass that uh, grows there that the birds will not raise in. Okay. And then people, you know, there's just a lot of people in the east. And um, so, you know, they don't have room to grow. Okay. Now people that have big acreage have been able to manage for them and, and keep them there. But, uh, and I'm talking several thousand acres to have a huddle population. Yeah. And, um, but so a, a big part of my clients come from the East, you know, that grew up hunting with their dads and their granddads. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, my longest clients are from Richmond, Virginia. Oh, know, okay. So. Wow. And where do they hunt then? Just all over? They, they come here. Yeah. They oh, come they come to Texas. Okay. Yeah, they come to stay in my lodge and, oh, okay. and uh, I take them out for three or four days. And, very cool. So let's talk a little bit about like the training and the competitions that you can do with these bird dogs. Well, there's like I said, there's several different competitions, and the training for that is of course enhanced. You know, uh, most of your hunting dogs uh, wear uh, a shot collar, you know, and um, I know a lot of people don't like to use a shot collar. I don't like to use a shot collar. It can be your best friend or your worst enemy. Mm -hmm. You know, but if the dog is in a danger situation, you want to be able to get him out of there fast. Yeah. Skunks, coons, you know, other, other animals, snakes, whatever. Porcupines are real bad in this country. And oh. So if you're not in dogs will point them every time. And so I don't know why, I guess they smell like a quail. But, Maybe. And then a lot of dogs will want to jump in there and give a mouthful of quails. Oh, so, no. So you got to get them off of that. Yeah. Well, in the competitions, you can wear them. A collar. Okay. And so your dogs have to be trained at a different level than you do. You know, I, I run a game called National, National Shoot to Retreat. And uh, the dogs, you, it's all on foot in a 40 acre field, and you compete head to head against another dog. And, uh, you know, there's other competitions. That, that's the main one I know the most about. There's horseback competition where people ride horses and follow the dogs, oh, okay. and uh, and that's probably the oldest traditional, uh, you know, uh, trials that there's been. Uh, what else? Um, let's see here. I think you've kind of gotten through them all. Is there any special terminology that we need to be aware of with the dog? Well, English pointers is a breed, and most everybody calls them pointers. Okay. Well, all dogs are pointers. You know, you know, all the pointing breeds are pointers. You like German short hair pointers, Bristol pointers, any kind of. There, you know, they all have pointers in their name. But English pointers are the ones that they call them just pointers to shorten, shorten it down. And so a lot of people get that confused. Uh, no, you know, your commands on your dog is hup when you want them to turn and and whoa when you want them to stop come when you want them to come here. You know, that's about it for a, a pointing dog, you know? Yeah. And, uh, 
you know, you say fetch after you taught them to retrieve, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, is there anything else that you would like to add that's pertinent to the topic about bird dog training? Well, just, you know, just be good to your dogs before you, you know, raise them up, let them be a puppy. Come. Most people buy a dog to hunt with and then they get it home and these dogs have a lot of energy. Yes. Lots of energy. Yes. And they want to run and they want to play and, and they're, you know, you got to take them and let them do that. Yeah. A tired dog is a good dog. Yes. So. And a happy dog. And a happy dog. They love doing it. So, yeah. You know, don't get mad at them trying to make them into a calm animal because that's not what you're going to get. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I would there are a few of them that are. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, some great house dogs that just come in and lay on their bed. Yeah. I've got a few of them like that. Yeah. Not all. Yeah, a lot of them are not made that way. Like you mentioned, their right. instinct is they want to go out and they want to point and run and they're not made for a one bedroom apartment. No. You know, so <laughs> you need a yard. And, uh, and you can train them to the point where they are, but you got to be consistent. Yeah. Everything about dog training is consistency. Yes. You know, you, and you do it time after time, and you do it the same every time, and you'll get a better result. Very cool. Well, I want to thank you for being uh, on my channel today, and I appreciate you doing this. Uh, we're going to show some footage of him in action with some of his dogs. So stay tuned. Don't click out. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and share and hit the bell to be alerted when the next video drops. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Nathan. And to do, you know, you're going to want to work on the, you know, the woe command and everything. everything. And uh, if she sets, I don't really, I don't praise her. I don't do anything for her. I just go tap her on the head and make her go on. You know, that's the best way to get away from that set. Okay. And, all right, y'all jump in. And okay. We're going to go soon as I let her go. Leave a check cord on them now. Just uh, if they make a mistake, I can catch them easy. Okay. Come on. Let's go. Come on. You want to jump? Oh. <laughs> I guess she was taught that before. Oh, yes, yeah, she was. Yeah, that. that's my, that's my fault. I'm sorry. Hi, Sadie. Oh, well, Sadie. Can't do it on the four wheeler. Okay, go. jump down, Sadie. Go hunt them. Hunt them up. Sadie, come on. I tell you what, y'all just follow. Them. Okay, we can do that. Take it right away from them, it's bad for them, you know. You see what I'm saying? Yep. And eventually she's gonna get tired of it. I walk over there and, and uh, pick it up. Where is it, Sadie? 
Fine. Dipper. Dipper. There he is. There he is. Here, here, dead bird. I don't even throw it. See, what you got? All right, bring it here. Bring it here, Sadie. Good girl. My launcher alone. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay. Whoop. Oh, Roxy. Oh, Roxy. Good boy. Good boy, when ox. Hey! Whoa! Whoop! Whoop! Ah, let's go! Hold him up! Knox here! Knox here! Knox!
Whoa. Whoa. Hey! Whoa. 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 Knox. Whoa. Fetch! Bring it here, bring it here, bring it here. Whoop! Joe! Bring it here. Get him. Good boy. Fetch! Bring it here, Joe. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Get him. Good boy. This way. Go!